Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna cover how to change the front and the rear rotors on your 2016 to 2024 Camaro SS or ZL1. Come with me, I'll show you all the tools that we need and the steps that we need to take. We're gonna start at the front rotor. I've got my impact gun, my wheel protecting impact socket, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, the OEM lugs are 22 millimeters. Uh, if you have aftermarket lugs on your wheels or different wheels, you may have something smaller, like a 19, um, but make sure that you are prepared with the specific lug, that, uh, lug socket that you need. Once you've got the front wheel off, what you'll want to do is head to the back of the caliper here and locate the rear caliper bolts, the bracket bolts. So you've got one right here. Try to get this for you. One right there. And then another one further down right here. That is an 18 millimeter bolt, and you'll want to get those loose. Once you have those two 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts loose, you want to have a caliper hanger ready for uh, hooking the caliper to the spring, just so that it's not hanging down and putting pressure on the brake line. If you're having a hard time getting the caliper off, it's probably because the pads are compressed or pressed onto the rotor. So having a caliper spreader tool helps in this scenario. Grab your caliper spreader tool and put them in between the metal backing plate of the pad, not the actual pad material. Give it a slight squeeze to relieve some of that pressure. Once you've done that, your caliper should come off a whole lot easier. I am using a hanger tool to hook it onto one of the springs up here so that it is out of the way of the rotor and not putting pressure on the brake line itself. Now, to get the rotor off, there is a T30 screw that holds the rotor onto the hub. Grab a T30 socket and loosen this up. <laughs> now, I waited to loosen this until after I had the caliper off, but I'll tell you, it's a whole lot easier to loosen this first. Don't take it all the way off, but loosen it first while the assembly is still together. Uh, that way you have a little bit of that friction from the pad that's in the caliper. Set your T30 screw aside because you will need to reuse it for the new rotors. Slide the old rotors off, set them aside. And then before putting the new rotors on, this is where you will want to maybe clean up the hub a little bit. Um, I have a drill brush attachment that I will take to the surface of the wheel bearing here, uh, or the hub here so that uh, it'll get cleaned up a little bit. All right, you're ready to install your new rotor, but wait, there's more. Uh, I recommend making sure that you put a little bit of anti-seize, just a tiny little dab on the wheel hub itself, just in between where the wheel studs are. This will prevent any seizing of the 
rotor to the wheel hub for future maintenance purposes. You only need a tiny bit. Uh, this stuff will get everywhere. So just be, just go easy with it. Before you put your new rotor on, I wanna make sure you use some brake parts cleaner and wipe it down. Now, this is just to wipe down any grease or oils that you may have gotten on the rotor or that were on the rotor during shipping. You can see it has this gray coating on it. That's an anti-corrosion coating. That will come right off as soon as you apply the brakes. So you don't have to worry about that. Once you got it clean, you wanna make sure you line up the rotor bolt hole with the rotor bolt thread. Get that on there, grab your rotor bolt, and you wanna make sure this is torqued on the front. These get torqued to nine Newton meters or 80 inch pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on here. I'm going to introduce some battery power just to help get this on there quicker. Again, this is a T30. Now we are gonna to torque this down to nine Newton meters or 80 inch pounds. It's gonna be difficult with a moving rotor. There you go. You are all set, ready to get this caliper back on. Grab it off of the hanger. Slide it back onto the rotor itself. Grab your rotor bolts and slide them back in. I'm going to introduce some battery power to just kind of speed things along. We're gonna get these 18 millimeter bolts tightened back up for the caliper. And these get torqued down to 150 Newton meters or 111 foot pounds of torque on the first pass. And then an additional 15 to 30 degrees on the second pass. And there you go. You're all done with your brake rotor swap. Put the wheel back on, tighten the lugs to 140 foot pounds, and you're all set. Let's go to the rear. Okay, now that we have the front rotor completed, back on and reassembled, we're gonna go ahead and start with the rear. So again, we're just going to loosen the lug nuts. Uh, again, just like on the front, we have a T30 bolt that's gonna be on here. Now, uh, some folks have had trouble getting these loose when they haven't been loosened before. A lot of times a impact gun will help get this out or a drill set to the hammer setting. So if you're having trouble, which this one did not give me any, you can hit that with a hammer drill or an impact. Now on the rear rotors, the caliper bolt back here, the bracket bolt is actually a 15 millimeter, not an 18 millimeter. And I'll show you where those are now. So on the rear caliper, the bracket bolts are right there. And then one down there. So you'll need a 15 mil socket, wrench. I'll use probably a ratcheting wrench maybe even use my impact on this, but uh, we'll get those loose and then we'll be able to hang the caliper so that it doesn't put stress on the brake line. Now the easiest way to get to these if you want to use a impact gun is using a extension and a deep well socket and going from behind so you'll get under the car to do that one. The other options are half inch drive, 15 mil socket, get yourself some leverage. Once you have it loose, finish the rest of the way. 
Once you have both bolts out, again, you can wiggle the caliper off. Use your brake hanger to safely hang your caliper from a part of the suspension so that you are not putting unnecessary pressure on the brake line itself. Just spreading the pads open a little bit so that uh, it's easier to put back on with the new rotor. Once you've gotten to this point, your parking brake should already be disengaged. You just need to wiggle the old rotor off. You wanna inspect the shoe brake. This is your um, parking brake here. Uh, everything looks to be in good shape. Inspect the hub as well. Just make sure that there's you know, nothing crazy. And then clean off some of the corrosion that's on there with a wire brush. And just like on the front, before we put the new rotor on, put a little bit of anti-seize on the hub itself. Just a, just a little dab here and there. You don't want to get it on the studs. This stuff, uh, seemingly, as soon as you open it, you get coated in it, so just be careful. Uh, again, I'll have links in the description on where to pick up all of this stuff at. Make sure with the new rotor, you spray it down with some brake cleaner, scrub it down. This is just to get the shipping oils off of the disc. Make sure you do both sides. I realized while editing that some of my footage was either lost or cut. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I wanted to call out here. This is the other side, still have the old rotor on, but the T30 rotor bolt, the torque spec on that is 10 Newton meters or 89 inch pounds. And the rear caliper bracket bolts are 100 Newton meters or 74 foot pounds of torque on the first pass. And then an additional 15 to 30 degrees on the second pass. Take you right back to the video where I am starting to put this stuff back together. Once you're done tightening everything down, put the wheel back on. And then once you have the vehicle lowered, you wanna torque your lug nuts. On the Camaro, it's 140 foot-pounds of torque. And that's it, you're done with the rear rotors. There you have it. You're all done. You've swapped your front and your rear rotors, and you are set to tackle your next drive out, your next track day, or whatever else it might be. Don't forget to save your aluminum hats from your two-piece rotors. This will give you the option to go to an aftermarket rotor ring if you decide to, like a DBA or a gyro disc. If you have any questions, leave a comment, I'll answer them. If you need any of the tools or any of the things that we talked about today, links will be in the description for those as well. Till next time, till the next project, we'll see you then.